knowledge adventure. Have fun. Get smart. Welcome to the main menu of Navigator, the easy way to get to know and use your Packard Bell computer. Explore the functions of Navigator by using the mouse or the tab or arrow keys on your keyboard. Welcome to 3D Dinosaur Adventure. Get ready. Put your 3D glasses on. Welcome to Dinosaur Adventure 3D. To take your virtual reality tour through the park, click on the doorway. If you want to go directly to an activity, just click on one of the buttons at the top of the screen. How well do you know your dinosaur facts? Dinosaurs roamed the Earth. Looking down on Earth from space 200 million years ago, you would have seen a very different world. Instead of the familiar continents, you would have seen one supercontinent called Pangaea. 
and one gigantic ocean, and on the earth would be large ferns and conifer trees, many that would be strange to us today. Most impressive, though, would be the dinosaurs. While some of these reptiles, whose name means terrible lizard, were as small as a chicken, others were taller than a three-story building. These great creatures appeared on Earth about 225 million years ago and ruled until about 65 million years ago. The first part of their reign was during the Triassic period. During that time, all the Earth's land was in one continent, so the dinosaurs could spread freely across the Earth. Also, the weather was warm, and swamps covered much of the land. During the next period, the Jurassic, the weather remained warm, and plants and animals increased rapidly. But the continents had begun to drift apart. The Cretaceous period marked the end of the dinosaurs. The continents drifted further apart, and the Earth's climate became more varied. Telmatosaurus Transylvanian dinosaur. Though North America is one of the main places dinosaurs have been found, it is not the only place. In Transylvania, scientists have found one of the smallest hadrosaurs. Telmatosaurus transylvanicus weighed only about 800 to 1,000 pounds, one-tenth the weight of what other hadrosaurs weighed, and was only about 16.5 feet long. It lived during the late Cretaceous period. Silurosaurs, little meat eaters. The silurosaurs were little two-legged meat-eating dinosaurs. Their name means hollow-tailed reptile. This classification, which is one of convenience, since silurosaurs were not all related, includes the little Comsognathus, Ornitholestes, and Coelophysis. Telmatosaur Dromaeosaurs fast and mean. Among the fastest and meanest of the meat-eaters were the dromaeosaurs. These killing machines had a long head, sharp eyes, and a large brain for their size. Their front arms were also quite long for their body, and their three fingers had sharp, curved claws. On their back feet, the dromaeosaurs had a slashing toe that they held away from the ground when they were walking or running. However, when they were attacking their prey, they used it to cut into the victims 
like a giant machete. Though dromaeosaurs were ferocious enough by themselves, it is possible they worked together in a pack to bring down larger animals. Estamenosuchus, mammal reptile. This mammal-like reptile, called Estamenosuchus, lived in the Permian period, just before the Triassic when the dinosaurs appeared. Estamenosuchus means strong garment reptile. It had large, sharp front teeth, but tiny side teeth, suggesting it ate plants. Its skull, about 36 inches long, was heavy and had bony lumps on its forehead and snout, perhaps for fighting other male Estamenosuchus. Estamenosuchus, mammal rep. This mammal like reptile. Singular Big Bang. Most scientists... Heavy elements created. Scientists believe that as the universe expanded following the Big Bang, it cooled rapidly and some of its energy condensed into tiny particles. Then an unexplained phenomenon called electromagnetic force began pulling these tiny particles together into hydrogen atoms. Gravity, another mysterious force, caused more atoms to gather. The larger these clouds of atoms, the stronger the gravitational force became, until the pressure squeezed the atoms so hard that it sparked a nuclear reaction, and the clouds became huge balls of fire. Stars blinked on all over the universe. These stars burned at tremendously high temperatures as their hydrogen atoms joined to form helium atoms in a process called fusion. Small stars can burn like this for billions of years until they run out of hydrogen. Then they cool down and collapse, becoming white dwarfs. But the largest stars burn up much more quickly, then collapse, fusing their atoms together into heavier elements. Finally, they explode into supernovas, scattering new atoms of copper, gold, uranium, and many other elements into the surrounding galaxy. The Earth and all its plants and animals were formed from these heavier elements.
universe at a glance. In this artist's illustration, you can follow scientists' current understanding of the steps that occurred in the formation of the universe. At the far left is the Big Bang, the explosion that marked the beginning of the universe. Why the bang occurred and where the material came from that exploded is still unexplained by science, but what follows is more clear. To the right of the Big Bang, you can see the great stretches of hydrogen that made up the early universe, and following it, the condensation of hydrogen into large clouds, and then into an early star, one of billions. In the next image, you can see our solar system begin forming, and then, finally, Earth. How the Solar System Started Though the details are not fully understood, it appears our solar system started about 4.6 billion years ago as a whirling disk of hot hydrogen gas mixed with heavier atoms from ancient supernova explosions. Gravity pulled the hydrogen together toward the center of the disk. The hydrogen became more and more compressed until a nuclear fusion reaction began generating energy. The sun was born. The remaining tenth of a percent of solar material condensed into smaller bodies that eventually became the planets. Leftovers became moons, comets, and asteroids. From dust cloud to our house, way out in the boondocks of the Milky Way galaxy about 4.6 billion years ago, a cloud of gas and dust began to come together into a rotating disk attracted by its own gravity. As this disk formed, gravity squeezed a large lump of gas at the center so hard that the hydrogen atoms began to fuse together, creating a nuclear reaction and igniting the fires of our sun. Orbiting the Sun, other clumps formed, eventually becoming planets, one of them the Earth. Those close to the Sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, became small and rocky planets. Those farther away mostly became large gas-covered planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. When Earth was first formed, you couldn't have lived on it. It was extremely hot, and there was no oxygen to breathe. It took a long time for our planet to be ready for plants, animals, and people. Though Earth was once very hot on its surface, today it has cooled. But the natural radioactivity of rocks keeps the inside of our planet hot. Large sections of the Earth's surface drift around slowly, as you see illustrated here. The mystery of life. The first thing to remember about simple life forms is that there is nothing simple about them. The most basic cell has been compared to a factory carrying out as many functions as every type of factory on Earth put together. Therefore, it is still something of a mystery how living things were first formed. 
But many scientists believe that in Earth's early ages, rain carried chemicals from the air and ground into the oceans, making a salty soup out of which life evolved. Though the molecules that make up living things are much more complicated than those found in the primitive oceans, experiments have shown that when acted upon by certain sources of energy, chemicals found on the young Earth could have produced the amino acids and nucleotide bases which are to life as bricks, for example, are to buildings. Other theories suggest that these building blocks could have hooked together into more complicated proteins and nucleic acids to form protocells, precursors to true living cells. Some scientists theorize that after eons of reacting with each other and with other chemicals, protocells somehow developed skins that could absorb chemicals and grow larger without bursting. Gradually, over many generations, surviving protocells became more complex until some of them were able to grow and then split into two identical copies of the original cell, at which point they would be alive. But other scientists, such as Nobel Prize winning biochemist Francis Crick, consider this chain of events so vastly improbable that they speculate early life forms may have drifted in from outer space. Scientists are still searching for definite answers to the complex mystery of life. Life. How did it happen? Here you can see an outline of the history of the universe. In the sky are galaxies and the comets, planets and moons that formed in the solar system, plus of course the sun, on which all life depends. In the ocean at the far left are the molecules that make up life. As you look to the right, you can see the bacteria that were the first cells of life, followed by more complex sea life and, finally, land life. This is the story science tells us, but how did it happen? Many scientists believe that by chance, molecules combined into simple life forms, and experiments have shown that with the right atmosphere, lightning and solar radiation could create simple amino acids that are the building blocks of life. Then these amino acids could combine into simple life forms, and these in turn could change into increasingly complex life forms by the process of evolution outlined by naturalist Charles Darwin. Some scientists, however, don't believe this. They think that early life may have come from outer space. Why? Because, in the words of scientists Francis Graham Smith and Bernard Lovell, the possibility of molecules randomly combining into life within no more than a billion years is vanishingly small. Therefore, some scientists, such as geneticist Francis Crick, have concluded that early life must have come from outer space.
Earth, the once poisonous planet. For nearly 1.5 billion years after the formation of the Earth, the planet was a seething poisonous place filled with volcanoes and covered by dark clouds of water vapor and poisonous gas. There was no life anywhere on the planet, and the air, water, and land as we know them today did not exist. It took hundreds of millions of years just for the Earth's molten surface to finally cool and harden. As it did, poisonous gases and water vapor were expelled from the Earth's core, creating the first primitive atmosphere. No living thing could have breathed in that atmosphere, since there was no oxygen and most of the gases in it were deadly. All around the planet there were erupting volcanoes and lakes of lava. Over time, the Earth's surface cooled enough so the water vapor in the atmosphere began to condense and turn into rain. Then for millions of years, it rained nearly continuously, filling up the depressions in the Earth's surfaces with what are now our seas and oceans. Eventually, the rain stopped and the clouds covering the Earth thinned. For the first time in many millions of years, the sun shone through to the Earth's surface. At around the same time, much of the poisonous gas in the atmosphere escaped into space, setting the stage for the development of the first life forms. What killed the dinosaurs? Why did the dinosaurs die? One theory is that a giant meteor or a swarm of comets hit the Earth and killed them all. Nobel Prize winning scientist Luis Alvarez, a leading supporter of that theory, noted that throughout the world, a metal called iridium suddenly appeared in the layer of rocks that were formed about the time dinosaurs died. Iridium is rare on Earth but fairly common in space. Maybe something from space hit Earth. If so, it would have had to be at least six miles in diameter, about the size of Mount Everest. If such a meteor hit Earth at 90,000 miles an hour, the sky would have been filled with dust and the sun would have been very dim. Without enough sunlight, plants would die and then the animals would starve to death. Perhaps all life didn't die because some seeds remained in the ground, waiting for the sun to return. Possibly, some animals lived by eating the carcasses of other creatures. The crater left by such a meteor must be huge. If so, where is it? There's the giant Tichulub crater on the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico and the Gulf of Mexico that seems about the right size. Though most visible traces of it are gone, it has been measured at 110 to 185 miles in diameter, which means the meteor that struck there must have been 5 to 10 miles across. What is a dinosaur? There were many... The slow... One of the simplest theories of why the dinosaurs... The slow death theory. One of the simplest theories of why the dinosaurs died out 
is that the Earth's climate gradually changed. As the continents of the Earth continued to shift 60 million years ago, new mountains rose and sea levels gradually dropped. As a result, the average air temperature around the Earth could have fallen 17 degrees or more, changing weather patterns and giving rise to new kinds of plants. It's possible, think some scientists, that dinosaurs were not well adapted to such colder weather. If they were indeed cold-blooded animals, then the colder air temperature would have made them more sluggish and less able to hunt or forage for food. Another possibility is that dinosaurs were not well suited to the new vegetation, such as flowering plants and leafy trees, which thrived in a cooler climate. Convincing as this theory sounds, it does not explain why dinosaurs did not simply move to the tropical regions of the world, where the temperature is far warmer, or why dinosaur fossils have been found above what was then the Arctic Circle. Death Ray for Dinosaurs? One long-standing explanation for why dinosaurs died so mysteriously is that a star in a nearby constellation exploded and bathed the Earth in deadly cosmic rays. If the star's explosion was close enough, then many animals, both large and small, would have been killed. But there is one major problem with this theory. Why is it that some animals, such as birds, mammals, and crocodiles, survived? while others, like dinosaurs and marine reptiles, did not. Library, Bibliography, Museums. A singular, most science. Library, well, Tyrannosaurus. Looking for dinosaurs. Most of the di dinosaurs, from lab to museum. Once a dinosaur has been removed from the ground, much work remains to be done. In the laboratory, the bones are unpacked from their protective coverings and cleaned. Scientists use microscopes and brushes and tiny tools, such as dental picks, to completely remove the soil surrounding the bones. They also make pictures of each of the pieces. The bone fragments are strengthened with liquid plastics and glued together. A favorite hardener is the acetone-based lacquer called Gliptol, which penetrates the fossil and then hardens. Elmer's glue is the glue of choice. It can be easily softened with water and pulled apart for readjustment. The process of recreating a dinosaur skeleton can take years. After scientists discover what the dinosaurs looked like, they can make molded copies of the bones to display in museums. These reproductions are often arranged in a realistic fashion to show museum visitors what the dinosaurs looked like, how they acted, and what their environment was like.
Do you really know your dinosaur names?